On this channel, we bloody love free sewing patterns. They can, however, sometimes not be what they seem. So that's what I'm here for. I'm testing some of the free sewing patterns so you don't have to. In this particular video, I am testing the Spearmint Corset Top by Mood, mainly because corset tops apparently still are all the rage and the patterns for them can be quite expensive and they are difficult to sew. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to sew the free Spearmint Corset by Mood. This is the printed and assembled pattern and I am making size zero. The fabric that I used are these cream satin scraps I had in my upcycling pile. We of course start by cutting the pattern pieces out of the fabric according to the guidance on the pattern itself. I find it easiest to first trace the pattern pieces with an erasable marker and then cut along my markings. This fabric has been in my stash for a long time, so it was in desperate need of ironing, so before starting to sew, I quickly pressed all of the pattern pieces. Now we can start the sewing process. First of all, we need to sew the dots into our front piece, which are these two cutout triangles that we need to now close. I am unsure whether I misunderstood the pattern here, but the actual dart point is way above the dart cutouts, so I mark the dart point onto my pattern and pin from the dart point to the end of the dart, and also pin the other side excluding the dart point. Comparing those two sides, I preferred the fit of the higher dart, which includes the dart point, so I closed my darts from the dart points all the way down to the bottom of the front piece. Darts usually look best after pressing them, so I did just iron them before continuing with the rest of the top. These are all the pattern pieces and they now need to be assembled, which was super straightforward. At this stage, we should try the top and see if it needs any adjustments. Mine unfortunately was too big, so I took all of the side seams in by about a centimeter. To make sure it fits well, I then just pinned the top to myself by closing the back of the top with some pins in the front and then spinning it around. As you can see, the front was bulging out a bit and not actually as tight and figure hugging as we would expect a corset top to be. So I just pinned along the darts to take in some of the excess fabric, which ended up being about a centimeter for each dart. I took the top off again and then just sewed that dart again. I also pressed all of the seams at this stage to make them lie flat. At this stage, the top should fit us pretty much perfectly with a small gap at the back, which we want for the tie-up. I wanted to include some boning into my top, however, this is optional. To create the channels for the boning, I just folded the inside seams over and top stitched them. This is on the outer layer of the top, not the lining. I made my channels about one centimeter wide and sewed them along the two side seams. This was then the time to add the zip ties, which I cut to be the right length and then of course filed to be smooth so they won't poke through the fabric. Alternatively, you could always use actual boning, which doesn't require the filing. I inserted the ties into my channels, making sure I leave it one centimeter at the top and bottom for seam allowance as we cannot sew through zip ties. Next, we can attach the lining to the outer piece by sewing all along the top and bottom of both layers. We of course need to clip the corners of the seam allowance to allow the fabric to lie flat and we can then turn the whole top right sides out through the back openings. I wasn't too sure about the little spike at the bottom of the top, so I held the top up to myself and checked what it would look like with a straight bottom and because I very much preferred that, I turned the top wrong sides out again and sewed a straight line to get rid of the edge. I cut off the excess fabric, turned the whole top right sides out again and ironed the top for all the seams to be crisp and flat. To finish the back openings, I just fold the raw edges inside the top and top stitch along the entire back. Next, we need to add all of the eyelets to the back and I also decided to close the straps with eyelets too, as this was what I already had at home. On the Mood website, it suggests using a ring, but I found eyelets to work just as well. I simply followed the instructions of my eyelet kit and placed all of the eyelets, which literally took forever. I actually timed how long it took to place one eyelet and it was nearly four minutes. I put eight on each side of the back and one per strap, which makes a total of 20 eyelets. 
Lastly, we only need to feed the ribbon through our straps and back and with that, the spare mint corset is finished and here is the final outcome. This is a cute corset top and it was simple to sew. However, I will say that it is not my personal favorite, mainly because it is quite difficult to put on. However, I do find this to be the case with most corset tops unless they tie up in the front. Generally, I have realized that I prefer sewing with stretchy fabrics, particularly because I prefer wearing stretchy clothes. But obviously that is just my personal preference. This is however a great pattern if you are a corset top fan and are able to fit patterns to your body. Let me know if there are any other patterns you would like me to test. And other than that, thank you so much for watching.